Hey guys, Generalist Programmer here and in today's tutorial we're going to be building a basic platformer mechanic in Unity. So what we're going to be covering is we're going to be covering ray casting and C sharp scripts which moves our player around the scene. We're going to be doing wall jumps and we're also going to be doing some physics as well as camera follow for our player. So just so that we can start jumping into this tutorial, I'm going to start off with a blank project. So let me just move this project over and open our blank Unity project. So as you can see, we've got a blank project and we want to set up a few things in our project just to get going. So we want to start off with some folders, which we're going to be using. So I'm going to create some folders. So I'm going to call the first one physics which we're going to keep some physics materials inside of. We're going to have a prefabs folder and we're going to have a script and a sprites folder. And a sprites folder. Okay, great. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create some sort of sprite for our player. So I'm just going to head over to scene and I'm going to go into the sprite folder and right click and create. Basically, I'm just going to create a square. So for our sprite square, and I'm going to name this player. And I'm going to bring this into our scene. So for this, we just want to zero out all our positions, just to make sure our player is in the center of our world. And for now, we're just going to keep it as that graphic. You can obviously change this graphic any way you like. And I'm going to add a component and it's going to be a rigid body 2D. And we're going to leave it as dynamic. Simulated mass, we're going to make 0 0.1. Linear drag 0, angular drag 0, gravity scale 4. So this is just going to allow our gravity to be applied a lot more to our actual object so that it falls quite quickly. That just simulates a bit of a, a cartoony type of jump feel. And you'll see what I mean when we start actually controlling our player later on in our C-sharp script. Okay, great. So just leave that. And we want to just create a physics material just to make sure we don't have any strange issues with our physics. That's actually supposed to be a physics material 2D. All right, I'm going to delete this one. And then here we just want to make sure we've got zero friction, zero bounciness, so that we don't have any strange effects. And then back into our player, and we're just going to assign this physics material under our rigid body. The next thing we need to do is we need to add a box collider to our player so I'm just going to add a box collider 2D and if you click here you'll see it already wraps it around our player so that's all good and we're almost ready to go we just need to change our constraints here because if we don't our player could like roll over or fall over so we're just going to freeze the rotation on the Z axis and now we can move on to creating our platforms back into assets Right, right click create and I'm going to create another square here and I'm going to call this platform and I'm going to create another one called wall. wall. Alright, platform we're going to basically also bring into our scene and our wall into our scene. Make sure they're both zeroed up for now. Take our platform and let's just resize it to the size we want and bring it over like that, make it a bit shorter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the color to a reddish color so that we know that's our platform. And actually for this tutorial, I'm going to make the walls a different color because in our demo video, it was all red just so that we can get an idea of how it looks. Okay, great. So our wall will resize in this direction and just make it slightly smaller. And then we're going to move it across. 
And I'm just going to now add a box collider 2D for this and for our platform a box collider 2D as well. Alright, excellent. Now we're going to move our player up slightly. We're going to just copy this and this place is in a different place. And the same with our wall. Add it in there. I'm going to move this up slightly as well. And let's just play this just to see how it reacts at this point. Okay, great. So our player falls and lands on our platform and doesn't fall through the floor. Okay, great. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to create our C Sharp script. And in order to do that, we go back to assets and I'm going to go into scripts. Right, guys. So now we're just going to create our C Sharp script. So I'm going to right click in the scripts folder and I'm going to go and create C Sharp script and I'm going to call this player movement. Just one more thing I want to just make sure of is that our player is zeroed out again because we moved it around previously. And if it overlaps your platform, then just move your platform down slightly. Just rearrange this so that it makes a little bit more sense for our actual game. And then we'll start with the scripting. Okay, great. I'm going to head over to Visual Studio now, and then we're going to actually write the C Sharp script. All right, so here we go. We've got a blank C Sharp script at the moment. And now we're going to start just looking at variables that we're going to use. There's a few things we're going to need. We're going to need four ray casts, which is going to be one for detecting our player when it's on the floor, when it hits a platform at, from the bottom, and when it hits a wall from the right or the left. So in order to do that, we're going to be using the box collider for the player to actually get bounds to see where our player's uh, five, well, min and max values are. And then from there, we're going to then start building up ray casts and doing some logic around our player movement. Okay, so to start off, we need a few ray casts. So we're going to declare a ray cast 2D landing hit, which is going to be for when our player hits the floor. So all of these are going to be privates. So I'm going to go quite quickly with this, but I'm going to explain each of these along the way. So landing hit, I'm going to copy these, and then we're going to have a top hit, a right hit, and a left hit, hit and a left hit. So the left will basically be when the player is all the way to the left and touching the wall, and we can detect that if it's all the way to the right and touching the wall, and if it's Top hit, it's basically the player's head is hitting a platform and a landing hit is it's falling on a platform or sitting on a platform. So the landing hit is the most important because we'll basically be checking if the player is grounded before they can actually jump again. In some games you might have a triple jump, etc. We're not going to be covering that in this tutorial, but maybe I will in another tutorial if it is requested. Okay, great. So from here, we need to get our colliders so that we can actually have some bounding boxes to stop our ray cast hits from. We're going to have a source and a target uh, position for our ray cast. The uh, source position is going to come from our box collider, and how that's going to work is if we just look at our Unity project here quickly. So we're going to set our ray cast basically just outside of our bounding boxes here because if we set it inside, it's going to hit against our player's collider and detect our player itself. So we're going to slightly put our right cast to the, to the top, to the right, to the bottom, and the left. So let's start off with the code just to get those bounding boxes. So for that, we're going to need four variables, and we're going to need a player collider. So we're going to take a private uh, box collider 2D, and I'm going to just call this player collider. I'm going to have four floats for the different positions. So it's going to be right position X. And I'm just going to copy this just to speed this up. Left. And we're going to have a bottom and a top. And these are going to be on the Y axis. Right, we'll see in a minute uh, how we're going to actually use this. 
then we need to actually get our player's rigid body because we need to affect its physics. So it's a rigid body 2D, and I'm going to call this player body. And we need two more things here, and then we need some states. So first thing is we need a speed, so that is how fast our player can move on the x and y axis. And then simply we need a jump height, which determines how high our player can jump. All right, great. So now we need some states. So the first one is we need to have a billion, which tells us if we're allowed to jump or not. And then we also need a billion, which tells us if we're touching the wall. So we've got those. All right, great. So now in our start method, we're just going to set some initial values. Initially, we want our player to be able to jump. So we're going to set allow to jump to true. We're going to get our different sort of components. So this is going to be get component rigid body 2D. Going to get our player collider so that we can get our bounding boxes, get component box collider 2D. And then we just want to get some initial positions for our right, left, top, and bottom positions. So for that, I'm also going to go relatively quickly, but I'm going to quickly explain the concept. So for our right position, we're going to start off with our player collider, and we're going to get our bounds and our max x position. That means that it's going to be the far right coordinate of our bounding boxes or our collider of our player. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of an offset onto this because, as I said previously, when we look at our scene, we don't want our right cross to start inside the player. We want it to be slightly off to the right. So that's why we add the 0.1 just to give it that bit of an offset. And then I'm just going to apply the same principle for the left, right, top and bottom. So left position, this is going to be the min value because it's the far left coordinate of the x and we're going to subtract 0.1f so that we move the offset slightly to the left. Right, then we've got the y top position and we're going to have a bottom position which is also on the y axis and this is going to be the max y and we're going to add 0.1f and then the bottom is going to be the min y and we're going to subtract 0.1f to get that offset. Okay, great. So that's what we're going to do in our start method. In our update method, we're just going to add this so that it can be detected each with each iteration of our game updating or the frames updating. Now what we want to do is we just want to have some form of get input, which we can allow some input for the user. So for this, I'm just going to create a public void get input method. Which will just do some inputs so that we can just detect, you know, for example, accelerometer changes, taps, space bars, etc., for our player, and then we can actually apply some physics to that. Right, so the first thing we want to do is we just want to set up some stuff in Unity. So we go back to our scene and we will basically just tag all of these. So you see I've already tagged this as a floor and a wall. So if you don't know how to do this, very simple, just go on this box and go to add tag and you can add with the plus. Just tag your walls with the tag wall and your floors or platforms with the tag floor. So you can use this to actually detect if the player has landed or not, etc. So let's go back to our script and actually start with this code. The first thing we want to do is we want to just uh, start with some inputs basically on the horizontal axis. So for that is going to just have a direction and I'm going to use the input.getAxisRaw method. And I'm going to get that on the horizontal 
access. Just make sure to spell this correctly, otherwise you are going to have weird issues and problems and you're not going to know why. And then I'm just going to declare a move variable 0.0f, which is going to be initial move of nothing. And then we're going to just do some checks. So basically if our direction is not a zero, then that basically means we're moving. So then I'm going to apply some speed and direction to our player and then add it to our velocity. So very simple move is going to be direction multiplied by our speed. And then we're going to just apply the velocity, player body dot velocity equals a new vector two, which is what it takes. And on our x, we're going to basically apply our move because our direction is being changed. And on our y, we're not affecting anything, so we'll just inherit basically the y velocity. So we'll take the player's rigid body dot velocity dot y, and then that will allow us to move left and right. Next thing we want to do is just have a bit of a way of jumping. So I'm going to use the space bar for this. You can use the tap on a my phone etc so I'm just going to get key and it's going to be key code as soon as you can go to key code dot and then it'll give you most of your buttons here I'm just going to type space and then finally we're just going to make sure we're allowed to jump otherwise we don't apply a jump so pretty simple now we're going to apply the velocity player body dot velocity and this time it is going to be on the x and the y so it's going to be a new vector 2 again we're going to inherit the, the x velocity and we're then going to apply the jump height so it's going to allow our player to jump Great, so now our player has jumped and now we need to disable the jump because our player is now in the air. So let's just say allow to jump equals true or false, sorry. Now what you can do is you could use your ray cast for this so that when your player is actually out of range of the ray cast that you then set it to false. But this is quite easy to just do it here. It's really up to you how you want to do it or what, what you find efficient for your particular case. Okay, great and now what we want to do is in update we want to get our input so we'll just call that a get input method and then we've got our positions we'll see if we still use this we'll still use this um, this is a bit of a, a live video without editing so i'm still toying with this idea let's see what we can do with that or if we actually need that so just before we actually draw some ray costs I just want to just set up some logic for when we land on the floor, when we hit the top of the platform or we're touching a wall, etc. So for that, we're just going to just do some checks. So first of all, we we'll just check if a landing hit of collider is not equal to null, then we'll actually apply some logic to it. So for that, I'm just going to say if the landing hit Glider.tag is equal to the floor, then we're allowed to jump basically because we're now grounded on the floor. Right, next thing we want to do is look at a top hit, which we're not going to use in this tutorial, but I'm going to implement it just with a little bit of a message so that you can actually, if you go away from this tutorial, you can go and build something with this, maybe allow your player to break some blocks like a Super Mario style game or whatever your game mechanic is. So again, once you make a copy of this, just make it simple and just change a few things around. So the top hit collider, going to again check if it is not null. Top hit. And yes, if we hit a floor from the bottom with that ray cast, then we just want to I'll put a message. Okay, great. So you can go and implement whatever you want here. But there you go. Let's now do the left hit and right hit. So again, just going to copy this and just modify it slightly. 
write it. There are left hit is not null. Our left hit is a wall because we basically want to check if we're touching a wall. Then if we are touching a wall, we want to allow the player to jump and we want to set touching wall equal to true. I'm actually not going to apply the allow jump here yet. I might do that later if we do have some bugs, but for now I'm just going to just do touching wall. Same thing here with right hit and right hit. And it's going to be a wall. And we're going to set touching wall to two. Okay, great. So that will help us do some detections. And I think just to simplify here, if touching a wall, I'm just going to set allowed to jump here. It's true because if any of these happen, we want to then allow jump. So it's more efficient to just put the if statement here instead of having the set true in both of these. So basically when we touch a wall, we then allow to jump again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the ray casting. I'm still not sure if I'm going to use this, but let's let's see what happens. We're going to do some debugging, we're going to set up some basic ray casts, and then we're going to actually draw them to see what they look like. So the first one is a landing hit, so I'm going to it's basically going to be physics. 2 draycast This takes a vector 2 and a vector 2 and a distance usually. We'll see if we'll actually use the distance or not. A new vector 2 and basically we're going to start with this dot transform. And because it's on the the floor that or detecting the floor, we're not going to move our ray cast on the x. It's only going to be on the y that we're going to be casting our ray. So this dot transform dot position dot x so this will always be fixed and we're going to use our bottom position dot y or bottom position y plus transform dot position uh, y right, dot y and then the next new vector two which is really going to be costing two and this is going to be again transform dot position dot x and it's going to be negative 0 0.2 f. We're going to be casting two. I'm just going to copy this um, so that we can get this done relatively quickly. Okay, so we're going to top it. It's going to be similar to this one. We're just going to be top position y. It's going to remain the same. Just need to have the top position y plus the transform that looks right, and then we're going to go in the positive direction with that. Right, left hit, right hit. I'm going to do the first one, and then I'm going to copy that over for the second one. To make it easier. So here now we're only going to be affecting our x direction. So I'm going to use our right position. Sorry, our left position because this is the left, and then I'm going to add a transform position on the x. So every update, basically our ray cost is going to move with our player, and then our transform dot y is just going to be fixed on transform dot y. Then our right, uh, sorry, our left position is going to be our left position up here. X and then going to subtract 0.2f just to give it that offset and going to on our y do zero movement at this point. Okay, so now for our right position, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to change everything to right position. Right 
position we want to basically add 0.2f here because it's going to the far right we're going to keep our y at the same position as well as zero because our basically our player is at y zero in world space we can just put in zero here look we can also do other transforms to do it but for now let's just do that okay let's now draw these rays draw ray ray Color black. Yeah. And then copy this three times, four times. And to add our vectors in there. Okay. There. Actually, see what this looks like. Okay, let's save. And is there any issues? Well, let's play this and see if I've made any mistakes. Not seeing our race. Okay, dot draw array. So we got the parameters right. Vector start, vector two direction. Okay, great. Maybe this point. It's just a really large number two, two, and uh, so what does it think? Anything okay? Basically, just make sure this works. So, say so by dot call rain. I do know definitely that we're going to be drawing from zero to zero to negative vector two. So, I'm going to draw from zero, zero to new vector. And I'm going to make this one and zero. And I'm going to make a color dot red. This is actually drawing correct. Oh, okay, um, mistake is <laughs> really stupid. So I have to go to player and I need to actually assign our script. I'm going to add the script and just run this. Okay, that looks better. So we've got our rays and let's remove that array which we didn't want. Okay, let's just look at what could potentially be wrong here. We want to actually move this. These rays look fine because they can actually then detect these sides. This top and bottom ray that, uh, but we have, by playing around with this, we actually adjusted the coordinates. So let's just fix that. So it's negative 0.2f. And negative, well, 0.2f here. We'll look at what this looks like. Okay, that looks slightly better, but it should be moving with our player. Okay. 
All right, let's just see why that's not happening. And bottom position. But why? Okay, let's just comment this out because I think this is what is affecting it. So that we just get our initial bounds and add it to our positions. Thank you. Right, great, so now it's moving with that and basically got a messenger hit the floor from the bottom. Let's just check. So I've got that, so we can see that. Let's also add this one here, just it looks like. Floor from the top. And just make sure that we actually have the right rate costs pointing in the right direction and we don't have them incorrect. Right, so here we go. We've got our log here. Our latest log is hit the floor from the top. So that basically sorts out our rays. So now we just need to make sure that our drawn rays are the same as what we've actually done our ray cost hits with. So basically, here it looks similar, it looks the same. same. Um, um, okay, so great. So now we can actually comment this out because we're not going to be using it anymore. Let's just make sure that our player can actually now move and jump and all these things, and then hopefully there's no issues and we can end off the tutorial there. So guys, nothing is happening. So now we just need to find out why. And uh, one of the reasons is probably because we haven't set a speed. So I'm going to set this to 10 and the jump height to 15. Or oh, actually, let's make this 10. And we're allowed to jump and we're not touching the ball. Right, so we can move around and jump. And oh, I'm jumping a little bit too much. Right, so if we're on just the platform here, we could uh, probably put a little bit too little friction. So let's just update our physics material quickly. Add some friction, 0.5. So we can actually slow down. So yeah, you can adjust these things. Maybe that was a little bit too much, 0.01. Struggling a bit. Okay. Defaults. And just make sure I still have the settings. I don't put in play mode. Remember not to do that. And hit play. And it's going to move around. So basically, we're allowed to jump here. Just need to make sure that our double jump doesn't work. So the reason for that is I see that we've got this hit the floor from the bottom. For some reason it's touching this with our ray cost. The top.
Yeah. It's still picking that up, so we need to go back and draw our ray so that we can just make sure that we aren't actually touching the wall. So this is where we start debugging the issue. Because we've got some problems, and I think again it's probably this right position and left position update which we added in here because it's probably modifying the positions. And let's see if it's still doing that. Slightly left. Still doing that. Okay, so now we need to draw our rays again so that we can actually see what is the reason for this. I think just to keep it simple, we also need to just add some logging on our left. And hit the wall on right. And something we have forgotten to do is that we need to make sure that if both of these colliders aren't being hit, we need to make touching wall false. And that is probably one of our issues here. We need to actually just put in that test as well. So if right hit dot collider is not, and our left hit collider is also not, then we know that it's not touching either of the walls. So touching wall is going to be false. Let's see if this makes a difference. Right. To left. Yeah. Right, you can see there's some issues with our ray costs. The other thing is that we haven't set an actual distance. So as I said to you that I'm not sure if we're actually going to use that, but we actually are. So we need to just set a distance here so that we don't cross too far. And into F. Into F. Uh, distance and let's see if that makes a difference. Okay, so now you can see that actually did help because now it's no longer touching the actual wall. And now we're allowed to jump, and when we jump, it's disabled, so we can't jump twice. Now we actually Touch a wall for us to jump. Away from the wall, we can't jump again. Something a little bit too much there. Let's just start over. Make this a little larger so that we don't have that issue. A bit bigger there, and let's just move this so we can actually jump onto it. Right. Okay. Hold on to it and then we can jump off. So there we go, we've got a wall jump. As to why these ray costs are drawing strangely, I'm actually going to leave that to you to find out why. But as you can see, this actually does work. You can do that and it's going to bounce off that platform. You can only jump once and we can jump when we are on the wall so this is a little bit odd but you can also put in some extra checks just to make sure that doesn't happen and uh, guys that's the end of this tutorial i hope um, it's been useful for everyone i know it was a little bit messy because it wasn't edited but uh, guys if you liked it please uh, subscribe to my channel 
like the video and just comment below just to give me your opinion about my channel and what I'm doing and if you want to see some more stuff and what other tutorials you'd like to see. Thanks guys, see you in the next one. Cheers.